a lot of questions in recent years about um, weed control and between cuttings and alfalfa. And most most times we um, are primarily concerned with winter annual weeds and alfalfa will come in in the winter time and either lay something down in the fall, late late in the fall or early in the spring and uh, take care of the winter annual weeds. And then after that, we don't really have to worry about weed control. But uh, more recently, we started to see more problems with things like green foxtail, uh, lambs, quarters, pigweed, and second, third cuttings. And, and so we started to do some work to try to figure out some options um, to, to control weeds in those settings. So we are in Franklin, Idaho right now, just across the the uh, border from Utah. And here we've got a trial looking at two products, real simple trial, um, two products that, that don't have labels yet but for this application, but they soon will. And um, <clears throat> so I wanted to, to just show you a little bit about what we're seeing here. It's, it's harvest day. And after today, we won't be able to see these treatments anymore. So here we go. So in this trial, we came in right after first cutting and made these applications. The alfalfa had not regrown much at all. There was actually a heavy weevil infestation that was pretty much eating it off to the point that there was, well, there was really nothing there. The weeds were up. The, the buckwheat was about, um, well, the buckwheat was, was dense and it had been cut off by the swather, the first cutting, and there were uh, about one inch tall uh, green foxtail um, that, that had begun to grow at the time of application. So the first plot that we're going to look at, and this is right up at, at the time of, of second cutting, um, this is the untreated check that I'm standing in right now. And if we look down, at the canopy and kind of peel things away, you'll get a feel for the uh, weed pressure that we're dealing with. And this is a, a really, really good weed population, something that a weed scientist gets pretty excited about because it's a nice uniform weed patch. But here we have it. This is, uh, you see the, the grass, that's green foxtail. Um, you look in there a bit further, you'll see a whole bunch of buckwheat that's, that's there, but the weed pressure is just really, really, really heavy in this field. So this is the untreated check. This is what we compare everything to. So now let's go look at some of the treatments. So the first one we want to look at is Linux or Linuron. This is a product that not, does not yet have a label in alfalfa, but it soon will have. Um, and here, take a look. So you peel the canopy back and you'll see that it was, it did a really, really, really nice job on, on uh, most of the weeds. You'll see some really small foxtail starting to come again, but um, the, uh, the weed population of those has been, has been reduced dramatically compared to what it was. The uh, buckwheat is almost completely gone. That's Linux, that's 24 ounces. And we went with a really high rate because we were trying to see if there was injury and there was not. Okay, the next treatment we're going to look at is Velpar. <clears throat> Velpar in between cuttings applied with a ground rig. And again, there's no label for this at the moment, but they are, there probably will be. And um, so here is what we're going to look at here. Let's peel back the canopy and take a look and you'll see again did a really nice job the buckwheat in this plot and all of the plot is probably three to four inches tall at the time of application and the uh, chemical was able to take it down it also did a really nice job on the on the foxtail as well um, but again no no uh, Alfalfa injury of note, 
uh, a little bit of yellowing early on, uh, just like the Linux. And by later on, it was uh, it had outgrown it. No real, no real issues, and it seems like we are going to be able to get this on. This is one pint of Velpar. So right next door to that is the 2x rate of that. So this is two pints of Velpar immediately after first cutting. And again, uh, injury was, was really nothing to be concerned about. If we kind of peel back the, the canopy here, take a look at the weed control, it did a really, really nice job. So it does seem that, that Belpar is uh, safer than we thought in between cuttings and seems to perhaps have some application there. And then let's just kind of step over here next door. Uh, this is going to be another untreated check just to reaffirm the, the weed pressure and we peel that back and again you'll just see the buckwheat, green foxtail, um, lots and lots of weeds. But really, both the herbicides that we looked at in this trial tended to do a pretty nice job. So Gramoxone or Paraquat has long been a standard herbicide for uh, use in alfalfa weed management. We primarily use it in the, the dormant part of the year when the alfalfa is, is just starting to break dormancy. Um, we're gonna have some weeds present at that time. And our residual herbicides like Velpar and Metribuzin and Prowl are gonna struggle with, with any emerged weeds. And so the Gramoxone tank mix with one of these soil residual herbicides can burn down the existing vegetation and then the soil residual herbicide can um, can, can carry that control on into the season. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but uh, within the past year, I uh, came down from the EPA that there's some more st stringent requirements on the use of bromoxone. Um, it's, a, it's a dangerous chemical. Um, it's a restricted use pesticide. It's got the skull and crossbones. It's poisonous. Um, and uh, there have been uh, people, people killed from, from ingesting it. And so as a result, um, there, there have been a, a, a few things put in place to, to help to try to protect people. And one of those is um, that this chemical is now required to be in a closed system, which means that it won't be available in a two and a half gallon jug with a screw on lid because they don't want people to come into, into contact with it during the mixing and loading process. And so it, um, that, that's going to that's gonna really limit you if you don't have access to one of those on your sprayer. Um, the other thing is that in order to, to handle this product, you, you need to have special uh, training, complete a course, and have certification in order to do it. And so in light of these, these uh, restrictions and these um, barriers that are now put in place, it's pretty likely that, that more and more people are gonna be interested in options other than Gramoxone to, to, uh, to burn down existing vegetation with the uh, soil applied dormant uh, herbicides in alfalfa. And so that's the purpose of this trial. And so in this trial, we are uh, looking at um, Gramoxone compared to AIM and Sharpen. All three are burn downs. They all have, uh, they're all just a little bit different from each other, but we, we wanted to, to step out and control or step out and, and take a look at these, these herbicides side by side so that in the event that we someday don't have the option to, to use Gramoxone, that we know what we can plug in in order to get the job done. So this trial was conducted on um, my own farm that you see behind me. Um, this, the, the reason that I hosted it on my own farm is earlier this year, it was un, unknown whether the university would shut down uh, in, uh, and not allow uh, research to be done on campus. And uh, so if we had a stay at home order in, the, in, in this era of COVID-19, uh, um, I could always stay home and collect data on the trial on my own place. So it was done here, uh, it was done 
Um, as we were just coming out of dormancy, it's currently July, and that means that that trial is now long gone. And so we're going to have to shift over to some, some still photographs from the, the time when the trial was in, and we can try to learn something from it. Okay, can, can everybody see that? Can you see that, Grant? Yep, we got it. Bingo, bingo. Okay, so this is the, this is the trial. Um, and this is just coming out of dormancy. The alfalfa was about two inches tall when it was, when it was sprayed. And um, this photograph was taken one week after application. So two inch alfalfa, that's kind of on the borderline uh, where, where we, uh, labels will say these need to go on before that. And so we kind of pushed the envelope as far as we could. And um, this, is, this is what we have, but very visual trial uh, for those people who like instant gratification. If you spray these, these, these types of products, you know you, you, you know you had chemical in the spray tank when you, when you come back in a, in a couple of days and, and check these out. So um, all of the treatments that you see, and you, see, you can see they're checkerboarded. All these plots were, were 10 feet wide by 30 feet long, four replications as you kind of, as you go from here up to there, you get the additional replications. And I thought we just, we just walked through each of these just like we were, we were out in the field together and, and see what we have learned. Um, I ought to mention that all of these treatments included um, methylated seed oil and uh, ammonium, uh, ammonium uh, sulfate, uh, just to try to heat it up as, as much as we possibly could. So here is the, this area here that I'm outlining with my arrow. That's showing the untreated check, 10 feet wide, 30 feet long. It's centered on those stakes. And so this is what the alfalfa looked like if, if we didn't spray anything at all. Right next to it, in, in that area, this is, this is the, the uh, Gramoxone 3, the three pound formulation of Gramoxone at 0.7 pints per acre one week after application. You can see that it kind of yellowed it. And um, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, what we're comparing here on the right is the 0.7 pint rate. And on the left is gonna be your a 2x rate of that, a 1.35 pi rate. And, and as you look across both of those plots, you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of rate response. Um, looks like the, the, low, um, the low rate and the high rate um, caused equal injury to the alfalfa. The next comparison is that high rate of gramoxone versus a low rate, a 1.25 ounce rate of AIM. And you can see that, that AIM is a much hotter <laughs> um, on, in, in terms of what it does to alfalfa than, than Gramoxone is. Um, main difference between AIM and Sharpen versus Gramoxone is Gramoxone has activity on grasses in addition to broadleaves, whereas AIM and uh, Sharpen are, are both broadleaf only products. This is a comparison of, of the, of the 1.25 ounce rate of AIM that we just looked at versus the two and a half, and there's really no, no significant difference between the two. Um, now here we have Sharpen on the right, sorry, AIM on the, 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 the right, and sharpen on the left, a one ounce rate of sharpen. And uh, again, very, very quick burn down, very complete burn down, um, similar to AIM. So these two products were very similar. And then here is a, a, a two X ray, so a two ounce rate of AIM or of sharpen to compare to that, that one ounce rate. And then the last slide I wanted to show you is this. This is Velpar Alpha Max on the left. Um, so this is a, it's got uh, uh, hexazinone, uh, which is the product active in Velpar plus diuron. Um, it's, it's one that, that, it's a herbicide that we commonly think of as when we apply it late, it's gonna 
yellow up the alfalfa and cause some harm. Um, and, and this is just in comparison to, to sharpen over on, on your left. The rest of the trial was combinations of Velpar Alpha Max plus these, these, uh, these other products to, to see how they perform together. And um, there wasn't anything crazy, crazy interesting to, see, to, to look at there. It seemed like they all played well together and um, there wasn't anything synergistic or antagonistic be, between them. So 